Hello and welcome back to OLC TV and thank you for joining our new Real History Show where we reduce the life of a famous general from a total war game to a badly animated video on YouTube. Today's subject, Liu Chong, the Prince of Chen. Liu Chong had inherited the Kingdom of Chen, present-day Joko in eastern Hernan, from his father, Liu Chen, continuing a line of succession that had started when Emperor Ming gifted the fiefdom to his second son and Liu Chong's great-grandfather, Liu Xian, in the mid-first century CE. Unique amongst the members of the Imperial House of Han, Liu Chong actively maintained his own territory during the final years of the dynasty, while other overly titled imperial relatives were content to play no role in governance and live off the profits of their subjects. He was famed for having an energetic personality, a potentially dangerous trait in the backbiting culture of the imperial court, and for being extremely skilled with a crossbow. So skilled, in fact, that he wrote a treatise on crossbow usage, the Nusha Bifa, one of the world's first on the subject. Despite, or perhaps because of, his imperial lineage, Liu Chong attracted no small controversy in his youth. In 173 CE, both he and his former Chancellor Wei Yin were accused of inappropriately sacrificing to deities seeking fortune beyond their ranks by none other than his new Chancellor, Shi Qian. Although killing the odd goat in the name of a god while asking for good luck in today's world would rightly attract no small amount of judicial displeasure, during the time of the later hand, sacrifices were routinely made to the gods in the hopes of being granted long life, good fortune, bumper crop harvest, etc, etc. However, there were also strict rules on who could sacrifice what and to which gods, and breaking any of these could lead to a charge of the most heinous of crimes during the Han Dynasty that of impiety, for which, like most other crimes at the time, the punishment was death. Luckily for Liu Chong, Emperor Ling, or Liu Hong to us total war players, had just obliged another imperial relative, Liu Kui, the Prince of Bohai, to commit suicide for a similar crime, and was extremely anxious to avoid another such scandal. Instead, when the cage carts returned from Chen to the imperial capital at Luoyang, they carried with them Wei Yin and, in a twist of fate, the accuser, Shi Qian. At the trial, Wei Yin admitted there had been sacrifices made to the god Huang Lao, but no improper requests were made. After much questioning of both prisoners, Wang Fu, the eunuch in charge of proceedings, agreed that there was no question of impiety. Yay for Liu Chong! Shi Qian had thus falsely accused his lord and, in a sudden strike of historical irony, himself was found guilty of impiety. Double yay for Liu Chong! But that the ceremonies held by Wei Yin were improper. Not yay for Wei Yin! The result, both Wei Yin and Shi Qian were executed and the Emperor declared the matter resolved. Liu Chong, for a few years at least, stuck to governing in Chen and keeping his head down. By 184 CE, China was in turmoil. Famine and disease ravaged the country and the peasants, sick of seeing their overlords prosper while they starved, revolted. A yellow sky was rising, and in its shadow an army was marching, headed by Zhang Jue and his brothers Zhang Bao and Zhang Liang. At this time, many local officials fled their posts, or were butchered by the yellow turbans, but Liu Chong was not to be chased out of his ancestral home. In response to the surrounding countryside exploding in rebellion, he raised a force of several thousand archers and brought them to his capital with orders to shoot anyone who looked slightly suspicious. Their presence, combined with Liu Chong's formidable reputation, kept the peasants in his own lands in check, turning Chen into an oasis of calm amongst the chaos of the land. He also showed up his credentials as one of the more benevolent rulers of the period, by taking in some tens of thousands of refugees into his own lands and protecting them. The Yellow Turban Rebellion was soon crushed, and the Zhang brothers killed, and all were hoping stability would return to the land but it wasn't to be. 
In 189 CE, Emperor Ling died, and by 190 CE, Dong Zhuo had taken control of the imperial court, replaced an emperor with another, and a coalition was forming to remove him from power. As a dutiful member of the imperial family, Liu Chong raised a force in support of the coalition and gave himself a new title, the General Who Supports the Han, just in case anyone was wondering which side he was on. Stationed in Yangxia Commandery, present-day Taikang County, Liu Chong took part in little to none of the actual fighting and returned to Chen as the coalition descended into rivalry and infighting. For the next seven years, Liu Chong and his capable and loyal Chancellor Luo Jun maintained Chen as an island of prosperity and security, but that was soon to come to an end. By 197 CE, neighbouring warlord Yuan Shu had acquired the imperial seal and declared himself emperor. This had gone down like a cup of cold sick with the other warlords, and Yuan Shu soon found himself beaten bloody by the infamous Lu Bu. Yuan Shu could no longer feed his army and requested slash demanded supplies from Chen. Liu Chong's Chancellor, Luo Jun, rebuffed the request, probably not taking too kindly at Yuan Shu's usurpation of the imperial throne. This, unfortunately, would be the final act for Liu Chong and Luo Jun, as Yuan Shu, ever the diplomat, in response sent assassins to kill the two men. Posthumously awarded the title Prince Min of Chen, he was to be the sixth and final Prince of Chen of the Eastern Han. With the great prince and his chancellor dead, the calm that had covered Chen for decades was quickly washed away with the tides of war, and the fiefdom joined the rest of the country in ruin. Thank you very much for joining our new style animated show of the history of the great generals of Total War. If you've enjoyed it, please leave a like and subscribe. Comments, feedback are always welcome as well. If you didn't like it, please feel free to leave a dislike. Um, we will have more of these shows coming up soon, um, covering other generals of the Total War games. Thank you very much for watching, uh, and bye-bye.